Manually adding your alerts to every single scene in OBS is at this point now, so 2021. You shouldn't have to do that anymore. And the reason why is because we're gonna be talking about a very powerful plugin for OBS called Downstream Keyer. Downstream Keyer is going to essentially let you take all of the graphics, alerts, and even audio sources that you have piped into OBS and essentially apply them to every single scene all at once. And you can toggle them on and off at any moment's notice and have complete control of your stream. What's going on guys? Chad here from How To Tech, the channel dedicated to helping you take your tech to the next level. And today we're gonna to be talking about DSK or Downstream Keyer. And it is a very powerful plugin and I've started messing with it and I found many, many uses that I think are gonna be really awesome for you. I wanna mention that there are timestamps down below so you can jump around in this video to where I showcase it, where I show you how to install it and also how to do other really cool things with it. So the reason why I wanna say this is a super powerful plugin is I don't like like clutter in all of my scenes in OBS. And what this does is it allows you to clean up source clutter. So for example, if you have so many sources in a scene, maybe you have to scroll through that list. If so, that is probably way too many. And what this is gonna allow you to do is to take very important things to you, like your alerts, set it up in a static spot, and then enable it and it's on all the time and it's not showing up in each individual scene. You can also use this for say background music because I like to do that. And if you want to say for background music or any other source of audio, if you wanna split those up, we also have a video on that. You can check that out right up there. It's called WinCap Audio and it's really cool. And I think it complements this very, very well. So go check that out if you're interested. So now let's go ahead, jump over to the computer and I'll show you guys what it's all about and how to set it up as well. So now that we're over the computer, I'm gonna walk you through installing Downstream Keyer so you can start using it. It's actually very easy to install. They have an automatic installer and also the ability to manually install it if you want to do that. If you wanna check that out, we have a video on that linked down below or you know up above, go check that out if you're interested in it. And also you can follow these steps here of where you just download it from the website or from the GitHub and right click on it, extract, and then just run the automatic installer. And then you should be set up. All you have to do after that is go into OBS, go up to docs at the very top left, and then click on downstream here. This should enable that panel and we should be good to go at this point to start using downstream here. So now that we have DSK installed and available for us inside of OBS, let's show some practical uses of it inside of OBS. And then if you wanna watch on, you can actually see how to use it and set it up for yourself. So it's actually very easy. And I just wanna show you why this is really cool. So if I have something like a lower thirds down here, this could be great for in your stream, advertising your YouTube channel or your other social media accounts. That's great. But we can also you know, have it show up down here and we could pause it at any point in time. I've actually got this one set to loop, so it's gonna keep running. Obviously, if you would do, were to do this, you'd probably have different things so it would cycle through them. But another example is actually the slideshow I've got going on down here. And I wanna showcase that this does persist over the top of transitions. So I've got a transition set up and it is absolutely covering that up. If you guys want some free transitions, I can hook you up. Check out this video up here on some of the different transitions that we've got. We've actually got two videos, so there'll be another one that pops up here in a second showing a different type of transition that you can use in OBS. So we've actually got quite a few that we made for you guys. And yeah, if you want to see that, check that out. Um, we can even add a logo in. So if we wanted the how to tech logo to show up there in the top left, we can leave that up there all the time. And the real cool thing about all of these is that they're always going to persist if they're enabled over the top of anything inside of OBS, which is really cool. Um, you can even do audio sources. So for example, if I wanted to do say my microphone, my microphone is actually set up in a separate scene. That's kind of the way DSK works. And I'll show you that in a second. Um, I can disable my microphone immediately. And this is like my microphone's muted. My microphone will not play no matter what scene I go to since it is routed directly in through a separate scene as opposed to being routed in through the back end of OBS under the audio section. So now I'm gonna show you how to set this up and essentially we do this by setting up scenes and then adding them to a new DSK. So pretty cool. Let's go ahead and do that now. 
So to get started, I think I'm going to show you with the slideshow because I think the slideshow is really cool to utilize in something like this of where it just is always there on your stream in the same location from place to place. And one thing you want to keep in mind is you really don't want to overlay stuff inside of DSK because it's not made to overlay on top of itself. So you want to kind of give screen real estate specifically for some of these things. That way you don't, you know, kind of have two things overlap and then you're kind of confused at what's going on there. But the way this works is through scenes. So I'm gonna make a new scene and to keep mine organized, I'm gonna name my DSK and then do a dash. And then I'm going to name this uh, slideshow. Let's just say slideshow. If you wanted to do lower thirds, go ahead and do that. Um, we're just gonna use a slideshow for this because I've kind of curated a slideshow. But the cool thing is since it works through any scene, essentially any negative space in your scene is going to let stuff come through the screen. So if it's in the background, everything that's in the foreground here in DSK is going to be overlaid on top of it. So think of the black area on the screen as um, opacity. But what this really means is that we can use any kind of source inside of OBS and use it as a downstream keyer. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do the image slideshow. And I'm just going to leave that as named as what it is. And then we're going to always play even when not visible. doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to change the time between slides till to two seconds with a um, 0.7 second transition speed. And then we're going to go ahead and find our image files. So what I would do is I like to add a directory. That way I just know where they're at and they can all be in the same folder and I can just update the files in the folder. I've got a test folder. We're going to select that test folder and boom. We've already got something on the screen, but there is a problem with this if we use this in DSK, and that's because it's taking up the whole entire screen and that might not be what you want. Um, maybe it is, maybe it's not. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna scale this down to say a more reasonable size. And let's say we wanted to do the same thing of where it was like maybe in the top right hand corner now. Well, that's really nice, but if we go back to our computer scene, there's nothing on the screen. Well, that's because we need to add a new key. So we're gonna click on the settings gear and click add, and I'm gonna label this probably slideshow because then I will know exactly what it is. And then we're gonna click on slideshow. So what we need to do now is we need to add that scene of DSK slideshow into the slideshow DSK. So I'm gonna go ahead and select slideshow, click that DSK, and then click the plus button. And what that's going to do is that's going to add DSK slideshow to the slideshow section. And if I go back to computer and we can see the game that I'm totally running in the background, <laughs> that's literally just not a screenshot. Um, you can now click DSK slideshow and it shows up. We also have the ability to add things like transition. So if we wanted to do a fade transition, whenever it goes on and off, we can add that and clicking on it as that transition. We also have the ability to do things like the stinger transitions if we wanted to, and those actually will show up over top of them in this use case whenever those go to play. So there's where you get kind of that little bit of customization. But to keep in mind, that transition is different than a transition like this. Downstream keyer is always gonna be on the top. That transition is not necessarily affecting the scene, it's affecting what's going on in DSK, if that makes sense. So that is how we do photos and graphics and things like that. So that would be kind of how that applies to say the logo that we have here. So if we wanted to do our logo, once again, just do that. It works the same way as the slideshow. Pretty much all of that's the same. So now I'm gonna show you how to do it with um, some audio sources because audio is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and delete this DSK for game audio. Actually, let's delete my microphone out of here. So let's remove microphone. And then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to delete my microphone scene. We're going to remove it. Get out of here. We're going to add one ourselves manually. So we're going to click this. We're going to do a new scene. I'm going to name this DSK microphone. And there we go. And then we're going to click the plus here. And then we're going to use an audio input capture. Now, the cool thing is if you wanted to do something like Discord, there is a thing called application audio output capture. And that is through that other plugin that I was talking about, WinCap Audio. So like I said, really check that out if you haven't checked it out before, because it's really cool. But we're going to do audio input capture and audio output capture would be like your headphones. So keep those in mind. Input is going to be 
you talking. Output is going to be what you're hearing. So these right here, these icons actually are very helpful. The microphone is going to be our microphone. So we're going to click OK. And then I'm going to find my microphone's interface, which is a Scarlett Solo. And I click OK. And we can see that our microphone is now showing up inside of there, inside of this scene. So we can see that showing up there. We can actually see that these other audio sources are still showing up where I've got these running through DSK. So we're actually going to remove all of that so we can just see this right here. Now, since I'm using an audio interface, we can see that only one line is jumping. That's because we need to set this to mono and I can just do the advanced settings and then check that for mono. And now my microphone looks good because I've got a fancy interface and I'm not just using a USB-C microphone or a USB microphone. So it's a little bit more different. But now that that's set up, we can add this as a DSK by simply clicking the settings gear, clicking add, and then we'll name this microphone or you can name it mic because these tabs are really annoying. I wish we could label these or set these up as buttons. Please give us the ability to do that. That would be nice. And then I can actually go back to computer, right? And now that we're here, we don't have our microphone anymore. And while yes, you could just do it in the settings menu, whenever you get into specific programs and applications, it's actually really nice because say you're playing a game and you go out from the game and you just don't wanna hear the game anymore because it's running through the desktop it's kind of annoying. You really can't get rid of that unless you mute it yourself manually or have your scene set up in a particular way. In this case, we don't have to worry about that because now we go back over to our microphone and we can click. Actually, we did not set that up right. So let's click on DSK microphone first and then click the plus. There we go. And then now we have our microphone. We go back over to our computer. It's gone again. But if we click here, we've now brought our audio back. So this is pretty simple to use. And like I said, WinCap audio plugin is a video you should check out if you haven't seen it before. And it's gonna be really useful and vital for you having a lot of control with this. It's gonna give you the ability to do multi channels of audio and separate them out however you need them to be. And it also gives you the ability to add graphics that persist even over the top of your really cool transitions that you may have. So if you wanted to add a watermark to the bottom right hand corner, top left hand corner, whatever corner of the screen, you can have that persist over absolutely everything. This is gonna be really good for live productions of maybe not just you know Twitch streams, but actual big events. So it could be useful for that. And also I wanna go ahead and mention if you use multi-track audio recording, it does not affect multi-track audio recording. It doesn't mess that up is what I mean. So if you want to use multi-track audio recording um, and you're not sure what that is, check out that video up there. It's a really good video talking about how to simply record inside of OBS and set your microphone on a separate track than your Discord and your gameplay on a different track than all of those and you can end up with like up to six audio tracks if you wanted for six different input devices or output devices or programs and it gives you full control whenever you go into the editing process which is really really cool sorry right, guys that's gonna be all for this video if you enjoyed you know what to do go ahead destroy that like button get subscribed turn on notifications all that cool stuff that helps us out a ton so if you don't mind doing that we would really appreciate it a lot of our viewers are actually not even subscribed to the channel we get tons of viewers from say search results and recommendations and most of them aren't actually our subscribers so if you want to become part of the how to tech community then maybe think about subscribing and helping us out and all that cool stuff let us know in the comment section down below is this a a cool plugin do you like it do you plan on using it or is this just something that add uh, just over complicates the simple setup that i've got going on um yeah check that you know whatever what do you think tell us <laughs> let us know in the comment section down below thank you guys so much for watching this has been chad from how to tech helping you take your tech to the next level and i will see you in the next video peace